The use of needles and scalpels in the laboratory present one of the highest risk situations and something that we focus a lot on, especially in bloodborne pathogen training, which by the way is required if you're working with any sort of human-derived materials. Um, so when you're working with sharps, there are several things to keep in mind. First of all, you need to remember that the glove is not a barrier for needles. The glove or the needle will go right through the glove, so you can't really consider that your first line of protection. You really need to think beyond that. So it's about safe needle handling practices and safe disposal, um, especially when you're working with animals. So talking about sharps, your basic safe sharps design is called a lower lock. And you can see that there's a thread at the base of the syringe and the needle will actually thread right onto that. And that prevents the needle from popping off, which can be a problem. There's something that we call recoil, which is where when you take the needle cap off, you can see my hand kind of bounce back toward um, the other hand a little bit. And that's a great prime opportunity for the needle to actually poke you. So you want to be very gentle about removing the needle, number one. Um, another thing you can do if you have this equipment in your laboratory is to actually use something called crucible tongs to uncap that needle. And that removes your hand from the equation and puts a lot more distance between you and it to prevent that needle stick. What you never want to do is try to pop the cap off with one hand. You never want to recap. We'll talk about that in a second. But you never want to do one of these. That's another very risky procedure and there's really no need to do it. So that's another thing to prevent. You can see that I have my sharp spin right here and it's not across the room. I don't need to walk around with an uncapped needle. It's literally right here, what we call arm, within arm's reach. So you have your sharp spin wherever you need to be and that uncapped needle just goes directly into the bin and that's it. And of course, with a sharp spin, you want to make sure that you have the, um, the correct size for the amount of sharps you're going to be working with uh, and the correct number in case you need multiple sharp spins. So that's, that's uh, kind of forward planning that you need to do with, with each experiment.